Recently, we did 100 quest bug veil runs on Battle.net. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do them too. From there, I'm gonna show you the highlights of these 100 bugged veil runs in our never ending quest to beat Joby's drops. This time, I think we might've done it. Best of luck on your runs if you try this, my friends. Let's dive in. I wanna send a special thank you to everybody who's subbed to the channel so far. I don't nearly pause as much as I would like and thank you guys for that, but I want to let you know that your support, subscriptions, and all of the general positivity really does mean a lot. And I also wanna send a special thank you to those of you who can respectfully disagree with what I say. This video is to serve as a correction to a previous video that I've unlisted. Because of that, we can now put this video correction out to let you know how to actually bug bosses in Diablo 2 Resurrected. While this strategy will work with any boss in the game, it's probably most efficient to do it with Bale. Here's how to do it. You're gonna need two characters for this. The first character you'll want to have completed the Bale quest, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna log in with that character first and create a game that you can remember, something with a simple name and password. And you're gonna need one character that you kill the boss with that has not completed the quest. Because of the new 30 second delay on game creating, you can't immediately just log out and log back into your other character, but that's actually okay. This will allow you to make your second character that is going to bug kill Bale to be a boss killer, much like the firewall sort that we talked about in my previous video. What you can do with your first character, let's say you have a paladin or something that can easily clear the throne, you could go ahead, teleport to the throne of destruction, essentially clearing the path for your second character that's going to come in. But if your second character is strong enough to do all of that on their own, that's fine too. You can just do some simple MF runs to buy up time in that 30 second window between when you create the game and when you can grab your second character. But regardless, that is the ultimate goal. What you're gonna wanna do is eventually log out of that first character that has killed Bale for quest, log into your character that has not completed the quest, and rejoin the game that you made. You should get a nice message when you look at your quest log in that game that says you cannot complete this quest in this game. However, it will still try to kill Bale for quest. It will award that character with quest drops. Because you can't get the quest in that game with that character, this trick can be repeated any number of times. And something that will let you know that this trick works is that bosses cannot drop gold or scrolls or potions or any of those basic items from their quest drop tables when you kill them. So I know it is sort of a pain in the ass to switch back and forth between two characters, but when you consider the bonus of magic find that you're getting simply just by pulling from the quest drop table, it makes it entirely worth it. But again, that works with any boss in the game. So if you really wanted to target something and go out of your way, you could build an entire character and stop her in act three, just so that you can keep doing bugged Mephisto runs or bugged Diablo runs in act four. Like I said though, it's sort of most efficient with Bale. And speaking of Bale, you are not gonna believe some of these drops that we've got. I'm so sick of putting videos out there with subpar drops. So in this one, I'm just gonna show you the highlights from our 100 runs that we did with quest bugged Bale. First of all, mm, I love the sound of cooking Bale with his firewall sword. God, it sounds so good. Our first and probably least significant drop is this unique serpent skin armor, the skin of the Viper Magi. The roll is kind of garbage, but it's still the skin of the Viper Magi. And our next drop comes in the form of kind of a double drop. We get a unique defender and a unique Kraken shell. And what's so cool about this Kraken shell is it rolled really good. It can roll up to 50 to strength, and this actually rolled perfect on damage reduction. The unique defender here is a Viscera Taunt shield, which actually isn't bad in LLD. And then the next drop is kind of cool. It's unique battle boots here. And of course we know those as war travelers, but uh, unfortunately these ones are ethereal. They did roll pretty good though, but you know, we're gonna use these until they break. This is actually one of my favorite drops of this entire run, but you guys might see this as nothing really too special. We always pick up these rare antlers or rare druid helms, always looking for the plus five natos. This one is super weird. It's like plus four nato and plus five to rabies and shockwave. I just like how unique this one is. I like to do these zoom ins here for dramatic effect when I'm killing and cooking Bale. And in this one, we get uh, two interesting drops. The first one, we dropped a set leather armor, which is actually just super rare to drop from Hell Bale. 
That's why I'm kind of circling it there. But the next one is this inconspicuous jewel, which is actually pretty insane. It rolled a perfect 15 to max damage and 29 lightning resist, which is also almost perfect. Very, very nice low level dueling jewel. And although we might have been upset about our previous ethereal drop, we will not complain about this one. This is an ethereal unique thresher, a definite trophy find. This is an ethereal reaper's toll. Cannot believe I finally found one of these things. I cannot make this next story up, right? This was run 99, okay? And what you'll see here is a set lacquered plate dropping from Bugged Bale. And we all know that as Tal Rasha's guardianship, which is a very sought after armor, super rare in the game. And I think this is actually the first time I've ever found one of these legit. But not for long. I shit you not. Cannot make this up. On the very next run, run 100, we dropped another set lacquered plate along with a set amulet. You can, I was so hyped hoping that this would be a double Tal's drop here. We quickly identify the amulet, but discover it's not Tal's amulet. However, the set lacquered plate is, again, Tal Rosh's guardianship with the exact same defense as though I duped it. Style points, my friends. I'm going to be streaming a lot more on Facebook gaming, so make sure to give me a follow over there if you want to join in. Don't forget to come back and let me know what you get for your best bug bail drops down in the comments.